Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, the Medical Director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation, and I'm very happy to bring to you today information about a new clinical study. And what's unique about this study, it relates to PROSVAC. We talked about PROSVAC Phase 2 and Phase 3 studies for castration-resistant disease, but at this time what's unique and why I'm so excited is the fact that this immune therapy is given to patients that have primary disease. The group of patients they selected are patients that are candidates for active surveillance. So let's look now at the title of this study. Here is the name of PROSVAC, it is the commercial name, and I will not even to pronounce it because saying PROSVAC is much easier but the title of the study is Preventing Disease Progression with Patients with Localized Prostate Cancer Undergoing Active Surveillance. But in order to refresh your memory what is PROSVAC, let's go now to a short clip by Dr. James Gully from the NIH, and he will explain what is PROSVAC. PROSVAC is a pox viral based vaccine that has a vaccinia priming and a Falpox boost. Each of these pox viruses has the genes for PSA, and that PSA has actually been modified to make it more immunogenic, as well as the genes for three different human T cell co-stimulatory molecules, which really drive the immune response to a higher plane. What happens as an immune response against one target, say PSA for instance, can lead to immune killing and then subsequent, the immune cells take up the dead and dying cancer cells and they can present any different target within the tumor cell back to the immune system. This results in an iterative process, a loop in which you generate a broader immune response over time. And this broader immune response can become more clinically relevant and more relevant for that given patient's tumor over time. This has been associated with improved overall survival in a randomized phase two study. And this is now being tested in a phase three clinical trial. So the treatment with PROSVAC as described in the phase three study comprises a initial priming vaccination with vaccinia and then subsequent booster vaccinations typically once a month with Falpox vaccine for up to five months so long as the patient doesn't have clinical progression. Typically we don't see an immediate decrease in the PSA in patients treated. This PSA decrease, if it happens, may be later or the alteration in the rate of rise of the PSA may be later. But that gets to the underlying mechanism of action where it takes a while to generate a clinically significant immune response. This clinical trial is for patients with localized disease. Dr. Scully mentioned phase two and phase three, and it showed some promise, but at this time, this is for primary disease, and you could check it on clinicaltrial.gov, and I'm going to give you here the clinicaltrial.gov identifier of this study so you could look at it yourself. This is a brand new uh, study. It did not start yet. And let me go over the certain elements that every clinical trial, um, you need to know certain details if you want to join. So let's go now and look at the official title. The official title is Phase II Randomized Placebo Control Trial of PROSVAC PSA Tricom in patients with clinically localized prostate cancer undergoing active surveillance. And this is very important, undergoing active surveillance. So already it's predetermined who are the candidates for this study. You have to qualify for active surveillance. We'll come to the specifics who can join this study, who are the candidates. But let's look first here at the primary outcome measurement of this study. 
This is a immunological study, and you could see here they check CD8-4 positive cells in the stroma. They check CD4, CD8. They will check PSA changing over a period of time. The secondary outcome measurements are related to PDL1, again to CD8, CD4, and the PSA doubling time. There will be some examination of change in tumor grade and tumor extent. As you could see, the estimated enrollment is 150 patients. The study start date is March 2015. But as you'll see in a second here, I'll give you the location where the studies are about to start. They are going to conclude the study probably in December 2018. So let's look a second here about how the study is being done. And you got the hint by looking at Dr. Scully clip about the mechanism of action, that this is actually very favorable from the patient point of view vaccination study. You don't have to give your blood. It doesn't have to be taken outside of the body, being injected back. This is basically uh, taking the vaccine using a vaccine vehicle and injecting it in the skin. So you see the experimental arm, it will be divided to placebo and experimental arm. The patient will receive post-vac, SC means subcutaneously, at the baseline and on day 14, 28, 56, 84, 112, and 140, which makes it about 20 weeks. So you'll get a shot, and that uh, already uh, was done to patients in previous studies, and we know that the profile, the safety profile, the side effect, it's quite good, and you may have some skin reaction, but it, actually there is a lot of material on this vaccination from other studies. So it's important to know that this is just subcutaneous injection. What I do not know is whether that enables patients to come from a larger geographical area and join the study because all they have to do is to come and get the shot perhaps once a month. Let's go now and look at the eligibility to this study. Obviously, you have to be a male and no volunteer. The inclusion criteria are biopsy proven and they want you to have at least 10 tissue cores of adenocarcinoma within 24 months prior to the enrollment. So if you had a biopsy done more than two years prior to the date of that question, you will not be able to join the study. Interesting also, you'll need to have less than 50% less than 50 random biopsy score positive. You'll have to have clinical stage less than two, T2A, which means it's localized to the prostate, one side. And the biopsy glycine, interesting here, they will accept glycine 7, 3 plus 4, or less. And here is the routine. A biopsy is done outside institution, will have to be repeated. And the routine is that biopsy is done outside institution, will have to be reviewed. The screening PSA will have to be less than 15 nanogram per ml. And, ha and the rest of it is quite routine, looking at white count, platelet count, bilirubin, and liver function test. Let's look a second at the exclusion criteria. A patient who had prior treatment, surgery, radiation, local ablative procedure, cryosurgery, HIFU, or even hormonal blockade will be excluded from the study. Patient who have distant metastasis will be excluded from the study. This is a very interesting point because they don't tell you how they define a patient who has distant metastasis. If they use only CAT scan, bone scan, or are they using the more sophisticated PET scan? They don't mention it, but they just take patients that are candidate for active surveillance, and usually they relate only to the less detailed imaging tests like bone scan and CAT scan but it's not a requirement here. This will have to be clinical information submitted prior to the study. The patient that have prior history of malignancy will be excluded. If they have HIV, they will be excluded. 
prior solid organ or bone marrow transplant will be excluded, splenectomy. So these are quite routine. A chronic administration of corticosteroids, this is uh, sometimes given for different diseases, not only prostate cancer, these patients are going to be excluded also. Let's go now and view the location where this study will be available. And I'm happy to say there is a location in the East Coast, in John Hopkins, but there are many locations here in California on the West Coast. So as you could see here, the studies are here in University of Arizona. And you have here a phone number you could call to ask about it, get in touch with a researcher, but they are not recruiting yet. I think it's a good idea to call early even before they started recruiting. And then we have here, this is Arizona. Now we have the next state we have is in California, Cedar Sinai. You have Dr. Posadas and you have his phone number here. We have Los Angeles, uh, the UCS Norris. You have University of California, Irvine, and you have again phone number. And you have University of California, San Diego. So those of you who live in San Diego will have this study available to them. And the researcher to call will be Dr. Parson Jr. His phone number is 858-822-7874. And again, as I said on the East Coast, we have the John Hopkins. We have here the phone number of the researcher Christian Pavlovich and his email address. The study is sponsored by the NIH and you have here also the information, Dr. Sherry Chow, she is the principal investigator. So if you have any question about these studies, please um, visit the website or call the number, or if you need my help, call our foundation at 619. 906-7400. Stay well, stay informed, and have fun. Goodbye.